Since the last time i done this tier list video, we have seen a fair few combat updates for the game, as well as a new playable, which is Urinosaurus, which released a month ago into the game. So, of course, let's get into it and let's start our Path of Titans tier list for late 2023. Let's start off with the first dinosaur, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, we do have a lot of dinosaurs here. I've put all the old ones at the back. So, T-Rex, let's start with you. And truthfully, this is a dinosaur that has seen some decent buffs and also some downsides as well some nerfs too now the one thing that i do want to say that it has it has that lone hunter sense ability which is actually quite good and it also is got that stomp attack now the area of effect stomp that is really effective in fact all dinosaurs with the area of effect attack mainly the bigger ones are really effective with that and that, that i will say tyrannosaurus would definitely sit in an a or an s tier i think for now i'm going to put it into a tier i think it's a solid dinosaur it's not extremely overpowered but it's also well balanced for what it is and what it does it's pretty decent the same goes for alberta ceratops last time i put this in a tier it's also going in a tier for now now i would put this into s tier mainly because of its tier pound for pound this is a really good dinosaur tier for tier it's one of my favorite dinosaurs in the game this has been the star of the last two trailers as well which i find very interesting but it's an absolutely incredible dinosaur and it's really well put together Philosodromius has received a lot of changes as well it got those gripping claws it also got some stuff that allow it to just perform better and also that flock migration ability that increases the stamina and speed well in the air some really good abilities now before i kind of put this one in a or s or something like that i believe but now i'm probably going to put it into b it's solid but obviously it's got its downsides it is still the only flyer in the game and i believe once another flyer comes to the game this thing will probably drop down in the estimations in the tier list but for now it's just an all-around generalist you know it doesn't specifically do one thing amazingly it's very squishy on land it's you know <laughs> quite hard to hit sometimes but if you're a good player with a Phalacidromius this can easily go to A or S tier if you know how to play it. and I know a fair few people who know how to play it. in fact one of my good friends plays this creature really really well it's one of their favorite playables. Alioramus is coming in next and Alioramus I would definitely say comes in at about C tier for now. Now this is a very mobile dinosaur it's probably one of the highest stamina carnivores in the game and the reason why I'm pointing it into C tier is because it's still a little bit squishy. Like it's okay. Most mid-tier carnivores compared to their herbivore counterparts are really poor. And when you compare them that way, it's obviously night and day. When you compare it standalone just to other carnivores in its tier, I'd probably put it up to B tier. I, I do like this one. It's very mobile. You put that uh, turning balance tail on and you're able to just completely evade people a lot more. And it works like a charm and it actually has some decent damage for its tier as well. Speaking of something that I do think is quite bang average. Average. and this one hasn't really got much love in the latest updates we've got allosaurus up now and well it literally has only gotten one new attack and that is the hatchet bite which isn't really the best attack in the world compared to the other dinosaurs that have got new abilities new buffs all that allosaurus is just it's just sitting there it needs more love and i'd love to know what you guys think about allosaurus especially aloe and dasp Another dinosaur that I don't go near is a Margosaurus. Now, last time I put it in F tier. I'm going to put it in E or D for now. I think it's going to go into D, yes. It is definitely gone up from how it was last time. When I last played it, it was very squishy. It was very, like, for what it was, it was terrible. And it's gotten some slight buffs since then. I believe its stamina has been tweaked. Well, every dinosaur's stamina has been tweaked. And that actually allowed a Margosaurus's stamina to shine a little bit better. It also got the area of effect stomp attack, which for a Margosaurus, when you're actually able to properly hit it, is a very effective attack. So I do think a Margosaurus has been able to go up in its estimations in the tier list from an F to a D. I know when I put it in F last time it was very controversial. Hopefully now it's a little bit better. Anodontosaurus comes in next. This is a dinosaur that I love. In fact, I sadly don't think it's up in those estimations anymore as a S tier, a true S tier. 
I think it kind of goes down into A tier. Now, is it better than Rex and Alberta? I do think so, yes. Bars Boldia, I put into S tier each time. And you know what? This is the first time I actually am not happy with it going into S tier. I, I feel like it's a walking sack of meat. I think Lambio technically is better because there's more that you can do with Lambio. Bars, I don't even think has an area of effect attack, but it's still a very strong dinosaur, don't get me wrong. Is it an A tier more likely? Probably, but am I gonna put it in A tier? I don't know, I feel like it would be better in B at the moment, and that's a controversial take. I know damn well people are not gonna be happy with that, but Bars is so tanky, you know, is what people say, and yes, it is tanky, but there's better tanky dinosaurs in my eyes, like Eotrike. After all the combat updates, it doesn't have much going for it. So for now, it's going into B. I know, that's controversial. I'm probably gonna get absolutely slapped. Someone's gonna be like, Psh, and slap me. <laughs> Dino Kyrus is coming in next. Now, I believe this one got some new vocal abilities. Now, it got one that was Goose Honk, which increased knockback on all its attacks, and then that didn't come to the game. It also has another one, which I believe increases its attack damage, or incoming attack damage is reduced. I'm not too sure, but regardless, it's a really good vocal ability, and I do think, especially with Lone Survivor as well, Dino Kyrus is a really solid playable, and this one will always stay as a menace. It's semi-aquatic, and it can hold itself on land as well, which makes Dino Kyrus exceptional at that. Kind of like Spino. I think Spino sits in a similar category to Dino Kyrus um, at the moment. Camto, I think it's obvious E tier. I mean, it's Camptosaurus. I love Camto. Don't get me wrong. If I could, I'd put it all the way into S tier. But no, it, it goes into E tier for now. Serato, I actually think this is a really solid playable now. It's gotten a fair few stuff. Now, the charge bone break bite is gone. Right, that's that's gone. It can't do bone break anymore. However, it's got that shove ability. It's got that other one, which is another uh, similar one. It's got a kick. There we go. And it also has another ability where it's a hide, I believe, or it's a sense where you attack it and you deal. You get incoming damage, like the damage that you deal onto the Serato, you get reflected. And that's a very very good ability for this dinosaur. Kind of helps it become an all-round bruiser for its tier. I do think at the moment. I, I know I did say. Alio is better than Serato. I'm actually going back on that. Now that I've listed off what Serato has and I kind of remember it, <laughs> Serato I would say is better. It's a tier above. But Conker, you know what? Now that we've got Conker, Conker, you can go from there for now. Conker's good. Don't get me wrong, it's bang average in my eyes. Like, it's got Scabbing Blood and all the semi aquatic abilities. However, I do think it's showing its weakness a little bit. Like, I think Alio and Serato can probably outmuster it, but I do think that's probably the natural deviation for those tiers. And then we move to Dasp, and Daspletosaurus got that new armor piercing bite, which has a 20 second cooldown. It's a very weird one. You kind of nullify the combat weight of the armor, sorry, the armor values of a dinosaur, which actually makes it quite good for being a, an Anodontosaurus counter. That being said, another thing that Dasp has that is coming is that its attacks will soon be unlocked. Links. Now, I don't want to base this tier list off upcoming abilities, but once those attacks get unlinked, I think it's definitely going to go into A tier. And for now, I'm going to say it goes uh, probably about here in B tier. I think Dasp is becoming more and more solid, and it's becoming what people really wanted to see Allosaurus become, a very competent free tier or free slot dinosaur. And I think Allo will probably get its time to shine once it gets that grapple ability and stuff like that. I think for now, Daspletosaurus just takes the cake there. Okay, we move into the raptors. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do Latin of Venetrix and Deinonychus at the same time. Deinonychus goes into A tier. Latin of Venetrix goes into S tier. I think the Pounce edition of Pounce at the moment, especially with Bleed, is insane. It's very, very good. This is due to change, and they'll probably drop down a little bit. Raptor Strikes is a very, very good ability as well, being able to absolutely stack on and tear your opponents to shreds. Raptor Strikes is only going to be getting better. Deinonychus is less because it's slower than Latin of Venetrix at the moment. Latin of Venetrix has a bit better of Bleed, and I think its stamina is slightly better as well. I, I don't know which one between the two, but I do think Latin of Venetrix does sway towards S tier. A pack of Latins is very strong. Get that pounce off on people and just annoy people, especially someone who doesn't really know how to counter with booking and everything being quite fresh in the minds. These two dinosaurs will be up there. Now, I do think because of what's on the public test branch, the removal of bleed from both of their attacks 
attacks and the decrease in stamina when booking or well the booking stamina drain is increased i think these two will drop down back to probably b tier but for now as i'm making this tier list on the current update that is on the live branch these two are occupying both s and a another dinosaur that i think will occupy s straight away is eotrike i've always stood by this one i like this dinosaur it's my favorite most comfortable apex dinosaur i see it as a bigger version of albertoceratops obviously not as mobile it's still a solid dinosaur with the sharpened horns being able to just buff your damage immensely if you manage to get a lambio in your group then it's just so much better than it is normally if you're able to deal punishment quite severely yes you can take it as well and now let's move into another dinosaur not even a dinosaur we're going with the two aquatics now kaiwekia has had its combat weight buffed and it's now got lone survivor because of the introduction of the lighter more mobile pack hunting creature Urinosaurus. Urinosaurus has pounce and that pounce is actually really solid but the only downside is is that there's not really much to do in the ocean still and because of that you know Kyrekia goes with a mark you know Kyrekia goes into ah you know what in terms of if I'm comparing these two you have to compare them both together don't you you have to compare them one after another. Urino is better and I'm gonna put that into BT. I, I prefer that over Kyrekia and I do think Kaiwekia is just like, it's a bit sluggish. It's, I don't know. I think probably D and B are more solid there. Kaiweki is more for lone survivors. But then again, can it really counter a Urinosaurus group at the moment? Especially if that Urino gets pounced and it's more mobile as well. Now, do I like Iguanodon? It's okay. I do actually think Lambio is better than it. And uh, for that, I'm probably going to just say Iggy is a solid b tier creature its bleed is really on its side it's a very tanky dinosaur is it better than bars not really but it's definitely up there when it comes to iguanodon as well its love has been quite low as well the same as bars boldia um but it definitely looks like it's going to be getting a second thumb slot because if you look in its attacks and its abilities list it's got two thumb slots right and that's obviously something that means that it's going to be getting another attack that it's going to be able to utilize on that form. So hopefully it, we're able to see something there. Now I'm just going to skip Kentro really quickly and go with Lambio. We've got our resident healer. It goes straight into S tier. This is actually a really solid assist dinosaur, support dinosaur. I know Metriac Amphrosaurus has recently gone into that role of being a supporter as well. But I think Lambio is the OG as a herbivore version of it. It's really solid. It's always had that. It's always been a reliable creature to play as. And it's actually fairly tanky as well for a mid-tier herbivore. With the ability to heal itself and heal its group members. I think Lambio is a perfect slot for anybody who wants to be an assistant. Anyone who wants to play that supporting role. Lambio does it perfectly. And it actually can take a fairly bit of punishment as well. Depending obviously on what you come up against. And it's also quite mobile too so you can get away from certain situations kentrosaurus I, I i do find a very solid playable i think it's a smaller version of stego and i do think it goes up there now because of it the fact that it has that reflective bleed as well and it has that bleed based tail attack it has shoulder barge that does knock back as well this thing does really well at what it does now let's move to megalania megalania has been turned into a little bit of a menace lately it's interesting it's been dropped down from a free slot to a two slot replaced in free slot with metria Canthosaurus. its combat weight's been dropped its overall health has been dropped its damage output's been dropped however it now can be more mobile and more of a nuisance i think its stamina got buffed as well as its speed i'm gonna say it's it's definitely in b tier it's either b or low a tier like up here probably better than bars in my eyes as a pack creature if you utilize it right it goes into a tier but for now sliding it into b speaking of a dinosaur that has changed its role completely I used to compare this to Megalania and now I can't. Like this used to be a C tier or a B tier, whereas Megalania used to be higher because it was smart, it was taller than Megalania. So it obviously was not gonna be able to do the Venom stuff more effectively. This, of course, is Metria Canthosaurus and Metria is now a support dinosaur. If you compare it to Lambio, it's the support carnivore for the carnivores, whereas Lambio is the herbivore support. Is it better than Lambio though? 
In its role, I think it's still one to be getting used to, but it's gone up as a free slot now to compare to Lambiosaurus, and it's also got up to combat weight, height, health, all that. I do think this is solid. And have you seen the healing rates on this dinosaur, both the solo and the group healing rates for its cores? Yes, it's very similar to Lambiosaurus, I do think it's a little bit less tanky, so I do definitely think it's it's up there. It's better than Serato and Dinon. Is it better than Rex? No. Is it better than Alberta? No. But that support ability is great, and I think that Metriacanthosaurus will be doing a solid there when it comes to that stuff. Pachycephalosaurus. I love Pachycephalosaurus. I think it's so fun to be a nuisance with. I play this with some friends. It's so fun, and just being able to just annoy people with it by bonking them, knocking them back, or even just annoying your friends by bonking them, knocking them back, and then running away. This this thing is great it's got the stamina pool it's got well it doesn't really have the health on its side but it can just harass people and i love it i, I just really enjoy playing this one and I, I think it's definitely up here in b tier is it gonna be up above these yeah you know what i'm gonna stand by that the charge with the knockback being able to just harass people with this thing it's just annoying like you if you like annoying people pachycephalosaurus is the one for you now picno i hate coming up against picnos they're so strong i've had fond memories with Pycnomosaurus, but I also have horrible memories countering Pycno. Pycno is a solid mid-tier carnivore. It's got that health pool. It's also got some downsides, so its turning radius isn't the best. Um, its stamina pool is okay, but when you activate that charge, it kind of does go down a little bit, and it's not too good, but it's solid, and I think people may disagree with me on the fact that it is a solid playable. Some people may say it's not that good. Some people will say it's really good. Now, do I cheap out and put it into B tier and say that it's better than Dasp? Yes. Do I put it in A tier? No. I, the thing is, right, there's so many dinosaurs at the moment that are run of the mill and pretty bang average, and I do think this one is just, yeah, it's a carnivore version of Pachycephalosaurus. It's stronger. It's got the high health pool. I think it is a great playable overall, and yeah, that's Pycnomosaurus, a really cool addition to the game. And I know it's a controversial one as well. Sarcosuchus recently just got grab and asphyxiating bite as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. This grab ability is great. You can grab people into the water, drop them and then tear them to shreds. Hopefully in the future you're able to combine this with lunge and stuff like that. Where you have that quick burst forward, you activate your grab and you get people. I think that would be really cool. Sarko is straight into probably S tier at the moment. Uh, no, actually, I don't think it will. No, it goes into A tier. There are some stuff that I do think this thing can do better at. Namely, I'm going to list this one straight away. The fact that it is now solely an ambush hunter, its health has been lowered, its combat weight has been lowered, but it's still a 4 or 5 slot. It's still one of those higher slots. I think it's a 5 slot. I'm not too sure. I think it can be better. I feel like its health could be increased because it is the only crocodilian in the game. I think that's probably why they made the decision to lower the health and make it more of an ambush hunter. But now it's got grab. I do think maybe increase it a little bit and maybe increase that combat weight a little bit. But the best thing I like about it is you can grab an Anodontosaurus, which... Why can you grab an Anodontosaurus? I will never know because that thing is a little literal coffee table in the jaws of a sarco. It's, it's weird and it's brilliant as well. Spinosaurus, I already have said, is up here. I actually think this one is probably more solid than Rex. You've got the comfortability then uh, of being able to go into water like Dino Kyrus, whereas Rex isn't able to. You also have a really solid stomp attack like Rex. You've got your claw attacks that do bleed and stuff like that. Spino's solid. It's great. And it's a semi-aquatic and probably one of the better semi-aquatics up there with Dino Kyrus as well. I know people who've been able to quite solidly deal with Rexes very effectively as their Spinos. And especially when you combine that with a Metriacanthosaurus in your group, you'll be able to do a world of a wonder there. Stegosaurus, I do think, goes into A tier. As I said, it is literally a better version of Kentrosaurus. I think Kentrosaurus is great. Stegosaurus basically just expands on that further with more combat weight and more health and decent stamina too. Of course, it doesn't have the cool abilities, but it also has solar powered, which allows its stamina to regen faster while in daytime, which is a really nice touch for a hide ability. Strufiomimus now can kick without 
needing to run or draining a lot of stamina. You know what? No, Strufio goes into F tier. It needs more love. Strufio and Kamto need to hone their skills and be better at what they do. They're both really mediocre. And you know what? No, Strufio has stamina on its side. Kamto does not. If you're running away from things, Camp Strufio is actually better than Kamto. But then Kamto has Hop Away, which is incredible. But then Strufio has Hustle, which in a group is insanely effective. I, they're both, they're both, you know what? They're both F. They're both F. They're going in there. I'm saying it. I'm done with them. They need to be more effective at what they do. They're just... And they need to probably be the scout support creatures. I know Deinonychus is getting a scout ability. Can't we get something like that for Kamto and Strufio or some support which allows them to maybe light up carnivores that are nearby to let the herbivores know there is a threat near or something like that? Please, let them hone their skills and be better at what they want to be. Strufio and Kamto, they're just... They, they hurt me. Staracosaurus, I think, is the lesser of Albertoceratops. I think it's a solid playable, and I really like its skins, and I think it's a really beautiful playable, but I think it's probably bottom of B tier. We've got so many B tiers here, so many A tiers. It's a very top-heavy list. Uh, and then Sukomimus has its claw barrage. You know, when people said Suko had a horrible claw attack and they told the truth, and then Suko was like, you know what, I'm getting claw barrage and this thing's really cool. Um, it got a nerf recently though in the PTB. This thing currently does 85 damage, but it's got no cooldown. It's going to get dropped to 65 damage. Suko is great at the moment. It's really good at the moment. Will it go into S tier? No. And so we go once again into the top heavy um, A tier. And that is the tier list so far. Can I reorder this one a bit? Probably. There are some stuff that I'd probably change. I think Rex probably drops down a little bit. I think Metria stays there. Um, Bars, the walking meat sack where literally it's like a TOG 2 in World of Tanks. If anyone here has played World of Tanks and you know what the TOG 2 is, Bars Boldier is the TOG 2 of Path of Titans. It's like, it's literally just a walking hit point, right? It's just got a whole load of health points. It does decent damage. And that's about it. It's mobility subpar. And once people figure out how to count counter you, you're just going to be drained of your health. I think this is a solid list. I'd love to know what your tier list is in the comments down below. Let me know, of course. And uh, yeah, this was my Path of Titans tier list. And this is the final one for the year, hopefully. I know damn well what's going to happen is we're going to see the release of probably some more playables before the end of the year. Miragaya and a Killer Bait or probably. And then uh, next, maybe February or March, I'll do another tier list. But this is my tier list for now. Do you hate it? Do you love it? Is it a mediocre tier list? It probably definitely is. But these are my opinions. This is what I think the most solid creatures are in the game at the moment. With Eotrike being the number one, Dino Kyrus 2, uh, Latin 3, Lambio. These are all actually quite similar, these ones. I do think Spino probably can go up there and Latin drops down that way. And that will probably be the tweak there. That being said, I'd love to know what your thoughts. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great day. Peace.